uh, this is the second um, uh, 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 webinar in the in the series that we are organizing until until the end of the year. Uh, it's all uh, organized under the umbrella of Fermenters Academy, which is uh, is basically um, focusing on sharing the knowledge that we have uh, uh, on on our yeasts. Uh, it 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 is not commercial. It's really uh, the purpose is to. Uh, to, to share knowledge and, and hopefully we, 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 we educate you a little bit in terms of fermentation at least. So before we start, uh, we have some guidelines uh, because uh, uh, we are with too many people uh, to, to be uh, all in the room uh, alive. So um, the presentation will be around 45 minutes. Uh, there will be room for questions afterwards. Normally that takes around 15 minutes. If possible, please leave your questions for after the presentation. Uh, but if it, if the, you have an urgent question, you can always uh, put it in the chat uh, uh, to, and ask this to Martin um, or Eric, uh, who will also join. And they can give you live access uh, in the room. <clears throat> and they can also talk to me, So because I'm obviously focused on the presentation. And um, I don't see, you know, everything that uh, that comes in via the chat. So, fortunately, uh, we have uh, at least Martin on board uh, to to help out today. Uh, <clears throat> let me quickly introduce myself. I'm uh, I'm Gino. I've been working for Ferments for uh, a little bit over three years now. I work in uh, Northern Europe, and I do uh, 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 sub, uh, uh, some technical support, uh, but also sales of of uh, Fermentus products. Um, I will let Martin introduce himself. Please yeah. do, Martin. Uh, my name is Martin. I'm the sales manager for, for yeah, all other countries, but uh, but Norway. Colleague Eric, who's also on board right now, I can see, uh, handles uh, the all of our Norwegian customers. So so my area of responsibility is mainly our Danish and Finnish customers, but we also have a, a couple of other countries we we service as well. Yeah, Eric is, is on board. I've been with Catholic for, for four years and I'm I'm very happy to be a part of this uh, this webinar a series, a series of eight. This is the second one. Gino is is a, a quite a, a knowledgeable guy. He knows a lot about this stuff. So uh, feel free to ask questions, not just today, but 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 always get in touch and, and we'll help you out. Yep, indeed. So we also have Eric on board. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh if you want to introduce yourself shortly to the to the people thank you uh, my name is eric i work for caldic in uh, norway i've uh, been doing that for the, over three years now so uh, yeah that's good <laughs> so guys uh, before i start uh if you have questions uh, uh and, and in your own language in danish or norwegian you can you can simply uh, type it in your own language because Martin and, and Eric can translate it for me. Um, with that, I'd like to start. So this is uh, the second uh, uh, webinar in a series, and as we go along, we will get into more and more details, um, and and we will share more and more information. So this one, uh, this story of today is uh, is already a little bit old to be honest uh, because we have been uh, uh, presenting this already for a, for a number of years but in the complete cycle of webinars it's uh, it's 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 a good second i would say because it it it's really is uh, important to, to realize uh, um, you know what we did in terms of rehydration versus uh, direct pitching so <clears throat> The question is, what is best? And this question actually came from, from the market uh, several years ago, I think maybe already four or five years ago, uh, where, where we got you know a, a lot of questions from brewers, what to do, can we put it in directly? We, we always put it in directly. Uh, others said, no, we always rehydrate. So we figured let's do, uh, let's do a test uh, and, and, and a series of, of experiments. And, and, and the results of that I will share with you today. 
<clears throat> but before I start, let me shortly again introduce uh, uh, Fermentis. So Fermentis is part of, uh, of La Safre, which is, uh, is, is based in, in Lille, in, in the Lille area, actually. Uh, it's a nice city. So you guys are all here. Well, the, the guys from Denmark are behind the picture. Sorry for that. Norway, Sweden, Finland. Um, uh, Lille is a nice city. So if you have the opportunity to visit, please do. Obviously not in the current situation. Um, our factory where all the brewing yeasts are produced is based in Ghent, which is around 40 minutes drive from, from the headquarters. Um, I explained last week uh, all about this factory, so I will not do that uh, today. So Fermentis, what do we do? We work in the world of fermented beverages. So we are the only business unit uh, within La Safra that works uh, on the beverage side. Um, we, we, we make products for beer, wine, cider, spirits, and any drinkable alcohol. Um, most of the business uh, we do uh, involves yeast, but we also have bacteria and yeast derivatives. And I will discuss these uh, in a later webinar. Today, obviously, the focus is on yeast. So what is yeast? Yeast is a, a sexual organism. Uh, it's quite small, four to eight micrometers, and it belongs to the to the clade of, of, of fungus. So in the tree of life, um, there are around 200,000 species uh, in nature. Um, this is an estimate. Some say it's a bit more, some say it's a bit less. Uh, but what is relevant is, is obviously the industrial strain uh, that are available on the market. And this is only a very small portion of, of this natural diversity, obviously. You have to think in numbers like a few hundred, maybe a thousand maximum uh, that are available uh, these days on the market. So <clears throat> two of the most important yeast are the classic brewing yeast, obviously the Saccharomyces pastorianus, which is a, a bottom fermenting yeast. Uh, it prefers a little bit cold conditions. And because of the lower temperature, the fermentation is uh, quite slow. Then we have the ale yeast, the Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, which, is, uh, which are the top fermenting yeasts. They prefer more warm conditions. And for this reason, fermentation is normally quite fast. So these two main species uh, for brewing, uh, I think, Everybody of you uh, uses these. Um, I like to highlight a little bit, uh, you know, the, the, the interesting aspect of the Saccharomyces pastorianus. Uh, this is a lager yeast. And what's so special about this yeast is that it's a hybrid. It's actually a hybrid between Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Saccharomyces urbayanus. And this was actually discovered quite recently, only in 2011. Uh, <clears throat> a guy called Diego Lipkind uh, was walking around in, in Patagonia, uh, sampling, uh, uh, you know, under the trees, uh, uh, in the bark of, of, uh, of trees, uh, to just figure out, okay, what kind of <clears throat> microbiology is, is around in this area. And he found uh, one yeast called Saccharomyces urbayanus. And uh, what you do, you know, if you are a scientist, you actually check, okay, uh, do I find any, is this a new species or do I find any, uh, uh, you know, resemblance with other species? So what you do is you basically uh, sequence the genome and then you blast it against other genome to see, okay, do I find any similarities? And actually he did. He found that there's a, a large portion of the genome, so around 50% uh, was actually similar to the, the, the genes found in Saccharomyces pastorianus. So he figured, okay, uh, it's likely that, that this is a hybrid. And then he checked also Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and then he found the other 50% was from, from this strain. So, so this is, 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 is quite unique. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of debate on, okay, when this, did this happen? Because it's a natural, uh, it's a na it has been a natural uh, uh, process. So, <clears throat> the, the, you know, but when the cerevisiae had sex, actually with the urbayanus, this, this new species existed. Um, they think uh, it happened somewhere in the wintertime um, because Urbayanus is a cold tolerant yeast. 
and, and, and you know, uh, many years ago, maybe 100, 150 years ago, uh, uh, brewers uh, uh, try to make make beers in the winter time uh, because they found out that uh, the beers in winter were a bit more neutral than the beers in the summertime, and nobody was using temperature control. And um, uh, at some point, they found out that yeast was not uh, top fermenting, but it was sinking to the bottom. And the beer they produced was a, was a lager. Uh, they didn't know why, but now actually we do since 2011. So to 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 uh, you know to highlight a little bit you know what's special uh, about a hybrid is I I, I looked up some uh, examples in uh, in nature, and and these are shown here. So from other domains of life, we have peppermint. I think everybody knows peppermint. Uh, which is actually a, a hybrid. It's a cross between watermint and spearmint. And uh, what you see often uh, uh, in, in hybrids uh, is that they outcompete the parents. And that also happened in the case of peppermint. You find peppermint all over the world. And uh, watermint and spearmint are uh, already harder to be found. Uh, uh, and that's because peppermint is a, is a stronger hybrid. So it grows faster. Uh, it has more yield than than these other two. And uh, another example is the liger, which is a cross between a lion and a tiger. And this one is uh, in a zoo in Germany somewhere. I don't know which zoo, uh, but this exists actually. Um, um, and then at last, uh, the wolfin, which is uh, a, a hybrid a cross between a false killer whale and a dolphin. So as you can see, uh, you know, this happens. It's rare, but what comes out are quite special uh, sp special things uh, so also you know if you want to talk to to people that visit your brewery you can say that the pastorianus uh, is is a very special yeast so at fermentus we have uh, uh, currently 15 uh, dry yeast in our portfolio three lagers and 12 ale yeasts uh, we have one bacteria, uh, one functional product, Spring Blanche, which you can use to create and maintain permanent haze in beer. I will do webinars on these two later and also on some of the other strains. <clears throat> so what 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 uh, is happening in the brewery uh, with, with this yeast is that uh, the, the malt is, is uh, uh, mashed and you create fermentable sugars. Um, this is all, you know, knowledge is just an introduction, guys, bear with me. So you, you have uh, around 10 to 15 percent glucose, uh, 50 to 60 percent uh, maltose, 10 to 20 percent maltotriose, and 15 to 20 percent dextrins. Obviously, this composition can change uh, based on so uh, there are specific mashing schemes where you can reach, you know, 20, 30 percent of glucose. Uh, there are meshing schemes where you reach, you know, way less uh, glucose and maltose, uh, but more residual sugars. But I will leave, you know, a maltster uh, to talk about this. Um, then this, these, these sugars are fermented and you produce ethanol and CO2. These are the, the, the main ones. But you also produce other things, glycerol, acids, like, you know, you can produce a little bit of acetic acid, succinic acid. You produce biomass, so about 5% of the, the sugars uh, that you put in is converted into biomass. Uh, and then, last but not least, a lot of aromas and flavors. And obviously, uh, you have residual sugar in the end in your beer. Again, depending on, on the mesh scheme, but also on the yeast strain. So looking into that, that aroma metabolism, I will only uh, show this, this briefly. Uh, so what you do is you convert sugars, as I mentioned, to ethanol via you know, specific metabolic pathways, but you also produce a lot of flavors. And that's what we as brewers are interested in. So the most, I will just simply, simply highlight two, isoamyl acetate and ethyl acetate. So the, the, the fruity banana flavor and the more fruity solvent flavor. Uh, I'm, I'm mentioning these two esters because they, uh, they are present in every beer, uh, but obviously in different amounts. So every, every yeast produces these two esters. Um, for the others, it's a bit different. Uh, some, some yeasts, uh, for instance, the POF negative yeasts do not produce uh, this 4VG while the POF positive yeast produce this, this clovey spicy uh, co uh, compound. But in, in, in the next webinar, I will go into a little bit more detail on this. 
to make some sense, you know, in the soup of options, uh, we did uh, uh, fermentation trials, um, all under the same conditions. So 15 Plato uh, uh, words made with simple Pilsner malt, uh, 25 IBU of bittering with iso alpha extract. So you don't have any flavor impact from the hops. Uh, all were pitched at 50 gram per hectoliter. All were fermented at 22 degrees in atmospheric conditions. And then uh, we came up with this very simple uh, visualization of, of flavors. So we have three axes, neutral, fruity, and spicy. And based on the sensory analysis of, of the experiments, we positioned the yeast uh, on, on the basis of these three axes. So this will give you, as a, as a brewer, at least uh, some direction in, okay, if you want to make a very fruity beer, uh, you can go along the fruity axis and select, for instance, S33 or BE256 or SO4. Um, so this is just uh, uh, simply to to have some direction uh, if you you know want to start making a new beer or a, a new style. Uh, obviously, these can move around if you change fermentation conditions, and I will discuss that the next week. Um, we have this information present in our website um, in uh, in the tips and tricks. Uh, so you can download this this brochure and and, and find out find out uh, also all kinds of other relevant information about our yeast. So what about uh, the yeast in the brewery? Uh, I will not discuss the process. I will focus immediately on the fermentation. So lager yeasts are uh, normally pitched at a little bit higher dosing, uh, uh, around eight million cells per milliliter, which comes down to a pitching rate of eighty to one hundred twenty gram per hectoliter. And ale yeasts are pitched a, a little bit lower, normally between 15, uh, 50 to 80 gram per hectoliter. Um, reason is that that lager yeasts uh, are, are a little bit harder to ferment, I would say. Uh, but as you will see next week, you can also do this at, at, at other temperatures and, and then the situation uh, changes completely. Uh, for the guys that re-ferment, uh, you can also pitch obviously uh, in the bottle. Uh, uh, and we have a specialist for that F2, um, which is nice uh, and sticky, and it's, it's also very neutral, so it does not add any additional flavor to your primary fermentation, which is, is nice because once your beer is, is completed in primary fermentation and you taste it and you think, okay, I really like this flavor profile, then you know if you, if you re-ferment in the bottle, you will not get any new flavors added to that. So the question is, how, how do you do that? If, uh, how do you start the fermentation? So what, what has been traditionally advised for many years is, is to rehydrate the yeast. So how does that work? Uh, you, you throw in the yeast in, uh, in water um, at a certain temperature. So for lagers, you know, it's around room temperature. For ales, uh, it's a bit higher. You stir it a little bit, then you wait for a certain time and you pitch it in the in the fermenter so this is this process is called rehydration and depending on the temperature uh, you, you can uh, determine okay when should i pitch uh, the yeast this was all uh, found out in a separate study so for instance if you put uh, if you put this at four degrees uh, in in the refrigerator you can wait up to 18 uh, hours before pitching so this this gives you a little bit of flexibility uh, if you're brewing, you know it's 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 more a practical uh, a practical solution. Alternatively, uh, uh, you can pitch the yeast directly. So uh, simply fill the tank with one third of the volume, pitch the yeast, and then fill up the rest of the tank with with the wort. So the question is, what is best? Because both are done uh, in in the industry, and I will show today <coughs> uh, two things. Uh, I will focus first on, on the yeast cell vi viability um, and, and the impact of rehydration on that. And second, in the second part, I will look at the vitality. So first, what is cell viability? Uh, basically, the cell viability says something about uh, the proportion of cells that is alive uh, uh, in, 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 in the culture. In, in, uh, um, so... <clears throat> Basically, it's a matter between life and death. That's what we are measuring. So 
the background of the experiments. I will show uh, only, so we did this for all the strains, uh, to be clear, but I will only show results of, of a few and you will soon find out why. Um, so I will show results from S33, USO5 and T58. So these ill strains and I will show results for the lager strains. What we did is we rehydrated at different times. So 15, 25, 35 and 45 minutes in 10 times the volume. So this is uh, according to the normal standard. We use different agitation conditions. So we did no agitation at all. We just sprinkled the yeast on, on top. Then we did moderate agitation. So we, we, we sprinkled the yeast on top and then uh, we agitated for around 15 minutes at 100 RPM. And then we did vigor vigorous agitation. So again, we put uh, we, we sprinkled the yeast and then we really shaked, uh, uh, shaked uh, the bottle. We did this at, uh, at different temperatures. So 8, 12, 16, 20, 32 and 40 degrees in different media. So distilled water, mineral water, tap water. 7% ethanol, worth at 7 Plato, worth at 15 Plato, and worth at 25 Plato. And then we used, uh, uh, we measured the viability by the so-called Tripton Blue exclusion test, uh, <clears throat> which basically means that you color the cells with a, with a blue dye uh, to indicate the ones that are living and the ones that are dead. So the dead cells are not colored, or, or are colored, and the living cells are not colored. And then you can do a cell count and calculate simply the viability. So first I'm showing results uh, on the influence of temperature and agitation on the viability for the three ill uh, strains. So uh, I start with this graph uh, on the X axis, you have the temperature on the Y axis, you have the viability. So between zero and hundred percent. So all that all alive. And then you simply have to look at the, the different bars. So the blue colored bars are without agitation. The red colored bars are with moderate agitation and the green bars are with vigorous agitation. <clears throat> and in this setup, it's, it's important to compare uh, the height of the bars of each color. So let's look at the impact of without um, uh, agitation. You can see that for the T58, there is no impact at the different temperatures. So they all have a very high, uh, let's say uh, 92, 93% viability. Then if you have moderate agitation, you see a little bit lower value at 8 degrees, uh, but all the others are really much in line with, with, with the situation if you, if you have no agitation. reason that it's a bit lower at 8 degrees, obviously, is because of this lower temperature. And we are talking about ill yeasts here, and they, they don't like uh, that much lower temperatures. Vigorous agitation uh, has more impact, as you can see. Uh, you you kill quite a lot of, of yeast cells if you if you put a lot of uh, shear stress inside uh, inside the flask. So this is definitely not recommended. So don't steer too hard. Um, for USO5, we found actually quite similar results. Uh, so without agitation, all nicely above ninety percent of viability. Moderate agitation uh, was a little bit lower, but still uh, above 80%. And then with vigorous agitation, you see again, uh, you have a drop of uh, around 40% in viability. So also for you as a five, uh, don't, don't steer this uh, too, too uh, roughly. Um, here you see also a little bit uh, lower values without uh, agitation at 40 degrees. This is also kind of obvious uh, because you know, this uh, 40 degrees is, is a bit too high in, in terms of temperature. And you see that the, the yeast still survives, but it simply doesn't like this, this too high temperature. Then S33, oh, sorry. As you can see, the result uh, is, is, is very much the same. So based on these results, uh, and we did this for all the yeast strains in our collection, uh, the best conditions would be without agitation and at some higher temperature than for the ales. The lagers, I'm showing S23 and S189 in this case. Uh, again, viability versus temperature. And as you can see quite rapidly uh, in the situation where you don't have any agitation, so you just sprinkle uh, the yeast on top of the wort, you have the highest viability at these different temperatures. In this case, uh, it's going a little bit a little bit less well at, at a higher temperature, which is kind of logical 
because the S23 is a, is a lager yeast, so lagers normally don't prefer too much high temperatures. Um, it's a bit in line also with the USO5. Uh, USO5 is an ale, but so also some ales don't prefer the, the, the too, too high temperatures. And the 40 degrees and also the 8 degrees are, are more the extreme situ conditions. We look at that to, to also uh, be able to, 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 to see a difference, uh, to have like positive negative controls uh, in, in the experiments that we do. Well, for S189, uh, what we see is something completely similar, similar uh, without the, situa the situation without or moderate agitation is, is the best also for, for this lager. So based on that, uh, again, we can conclude that without agitation, and in this case for the lagers at somewhat lower temperature, works the best. Then the impact of the rehydration time on the viability for both uh, ales and lagers. Um, here on the left side, I'm showing the ales. Uh, on the x-axis now, we have the rehydration time uh, versus the viability. For T58, USO5, and S33. So, in this case, you compare again the colored bars. So, for T58, uh, we found no difference in, in viability after 15, 25, 35, or 45 minutes. And for USO5, similar, no differences uh, at the different times. And for uh, S33, also. Similarly, for the two lagers, uh, there's no difference. Uh, for S23, after 15, 25, 35, or 45 minutes rehydration, and the same for, for S189. So this means that this rehydration step is extremely fast. Uh, already after 15 minutes, it's done. Maybe even shorter, we did not go below that, but uh, after 15 minutes, you, you already have uh, a nicely rehydrated yeast. Now that's ready uh, for pitching. Then the impact of rehydration medium on the viability. Uh, and, and first of all, water. So we looked at distilled water, mineral water, and tap water. Uh, why mineral water? Um, uh, because we heard that some brewers are using actually bottled water from the supermarket. Uh, main reason is because it's, uh, it's handy. Uh, but uh, I like to point out that this is not a sterile uh, st that this water is not sterile so you you always have to boil it before you use it also mineral water there can be uh, trace elements of of, uh, of bacteria still in 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 there and that said if you compare so the, these three different waters uh, uh, on, on uh, in terms of viability for for these three uh, ale yeasts then you see there's no difference whatsoever um, uh, per yeast so uh, the viability is is not is not affected um, by uh, the substrate uh, by the medium. Then um, uh, the rehydration in wort. So both for the ales and the lagers, um, we did it at two temperatures, at seven degrees and at twenty degrees. So here I'm showing uh, T three. So a lager and USO5. Um, as you can see, if you uh, rehydrate uh, in, in water, you find around 85% viability, and it actually improves when you rehydrate in, in the word. So this is already an indication that the direct pitch uh, uh, should work uh, similarly. We find a similar trend for S23, uh, a similar trend for USO5. Uh, also at a different temperature. So at a higher temperature, uh, we find already a, a higher viability, at least for T58, which is logical. Uh, this yeast doesn't like lower temperatures. It likes higher temperature. Uh, but to look at the profile, you see it's going up. Uh, so at higher word concentrations, it, it, it seems at higher Plato, it seems that it's working a little bit better, which for us was a surprise. Because, you know, if you have a, a high gravity word, uh, there's a lot of sugar in there and also a lot of osmotic uh, pressure. So we thought it would uh, have a little bit of an impact uh, in terms of stress on the yeast. But uh, obviously it has it has not this impact. It's actually favorable. And maybe because this is if you pitch, you know, a yeast from uh, from, uh, you know, that has been in a, in a, in a pack uh, in the refrigerator in dry condition. It's, it's just sitting there. It's not doing anything. 
and, and then if you put it into water, <clears throat> obviously it will rehydrate. But if you put it in, in a sugar solution, uh, you, you put it, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, on a tropical island in in, a, in, a, in great conditions because it, it already senses that there's sugar around, so it wants to start fermentation. So the conclusions on yeast cell viability. Uh, Agitation has uh, the highest impact, so it's best to not or moderate agitate uh, the word. Temperature has no significant impact. Media has no significant impact. And we saw no differences uh, in terms of rehydration time, so it was complete very fast already after 15 minutes. And the conclusions are very similar for ales and lagers. So this is a bit boring, guys, but uh, actually good news, because it means that no matter what you do, uh, it will work. Then rehydration or direct pitching and the impact on yeast cell uh, uh, vitality. So uh, to explain what is vitality, uh, vitality says something on uh, on the energy state of, uh, of of the yeast. And as an example, I show here two pictures. So you have uh, the Bundys sitting here. Uh, obviously, they are all alive, including the dog. I, I think you also got this program in the past on television uh, in the Nordics. People Gino uh, that are raw. on the chat. Oh, we have a question. Okay, we have a question on the chat. I think it's important we we take it right now. Okay. Uh, the question is: different yeast types in the same health condition at the beginning of the experiment. So, is it the same number of living cells for every uh, yeast type in the experiment? Um, uh, no. It, uh, it will be a, a little bit different for uh, for each yeast. Um, as I explained last week, uh, we, we we have for each yeast a specific production process. So there, there can be a little variations in, uh, in, in uh, the amount of cells, viable cells in, in the pack. Um, it, it's not much, uh, but it's possible that instead of, uh, you know, the limit that we put is uh, more than, uh, what is it, 10? billion uh, viable cells per gram um, um, it's possible that it's 1.1 for instance uh, or, or, or 1.2 uh, uh, it's 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 a little bit depending on uh, on the on the specific fermentation uh, but within this experiment uh, it's all the same per yeast strain that's why okay. i mentioned you have to you have to compare the the height of uh, and, the, and the change of the same colors because uh, uh, if you don't see a change, it, it means uh, it's good. If you see a change, so if you see a drop, it means it's it's not good. Does that answer your question, Peter? I, th I think it does, Gino. Okay. And then we have uh, Kalle, uh, another question. Compared to the beer yeast, how do uh, the strains for distillation like D53 or US uh, W6 differ in yeast viability? They don't. So um, I explained this last week. So if you have the opportunity, uh, you can uh, watch back the webinar. Uh, all our yeasts have a, 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 a quality standards. So as you remember, the purity is 99.999%. And the, the minimum yeast cell uh, viability is, uh, is, is like, I don't know, 95 point something. So we have always a minimal uh, viable cell count in the packs. Uh, for ales, this is uh, uh, by heart 10 billion cells per gram. For lagers, this is 6 billion cells per gram. So this is the minimal amount. And as, as I just mentioned, there can be little uh, variation uh, in, 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 this, uh, in, in this number um, because you, know, you have simply biological uh, variation in, in every process. So let's get back to the, uh, to the presentation. So, uh, obviously, you know, these people that are running the marathon are in a completely different energy state than uh, the Bundys here sitting on the couch. They are both alive, so in both cases the viability is 100%, but the vitality is, is significantly different. So for that, uh, just first I'll discuss the, the background on the, on the conditions. Uh, again, we tested uh, all the strains. I will only show a few because the results are the same for, for all. So for the ale yeast, I will uh, show SO4, USO5, T58 in this case. Uh, for the lagers, I will show all three in our portfolio. 
so the three conditions tested were no rehydration, so direct uh, direct pitching in words, and this is uh, uh, in the in the graphs. This is mentioned as DP. Uh, rehydration in water at 30 degrees with moderate agitation is the W, and rehydration in words at 20 degrees with moderate agitation it's it's uh, designated 15 Plato. For the ale strains, we pitched everything at 50 gram per hectoliter, uh, 15 Plato word, uh, and a temperature of 20 degrees. Uh, and for the lagers, uh, we pitched a little bit higher, 100 gram per hectoliter. So. In addition to uh, starting from fresh yeast, we also uh, looked at forced aged yeast. And as I explained last week, this is, um, this is a test uh, where you uh, actually uh, 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 force the yeast into a certain uh, like aging protocol. Um, and so this is a very specific test where you cycle the yeast and you put it at high temperature, low temperature at, uh, 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 during a, a certain time. And by doing that, you, you uh, basically uh, find uh, the equivalent to a normal three years of natural age, aging. This test can be done you know, within a week or so, so it, it, it's way faster than, than normal natural aging. We also do this, as I explained uh, last week, but for these experiments we used forged aging. So it means that we looked at the yeast that was coming freshly from, uh, from, from, from the factory, and we looked at uh, the same yeast, is aged uh, uh, to, to an equivalent of three years because we we state that the, the best before date of our yeast is three years just to indicate the difference between old and new yeast so the follow-up and analysis on vitality so we did the fermentation in triplicates and we evaluated the kinetics uh, I will show results on this, obviously. And then at the end of the fermentation, we also looked at final analysis, so the, the ethanol production, uh, the volatiles, uh, and only, only the basic ones, so acetaldehyde, esters, high, higher alcohols, and the VDKs, so the off flavors. So let's go to the results. First of all, I'm showing S33. S33 is, a, is, a, is a one of the most fruity yeast we have in our portfolio. Uh, so in the in this in the top left corner here, I'm showing uh, the time versus the ethanol concentration, and as you see on the curve, so these are uh, fermentation kinetics. The blue line is the case where you, we did the direct pitch. Uh, the orange line is uh, uh, rehydrated in water, and the, the gray line is rehydrated in 50 Plato wort. So you can see here there's there's no difference in in, in kinetics. And they are all exactly the same. If you look at the final concentration, so the, the this is the samples taken here, you see uh, that the ethanol concentration in all cases is the same. And you see a little bit of variation, but it, it's it's not significant. Uh, so you have to look at this as exactly the same value. Um, apparent degree of fermentation, as expected, is also uh, the same uh, for 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 the for this because we also find the same ethanol concentration. So. You can expect that the apparent degree of fermentation is also the same. Then volatile, so aroma compounds. And again, you have to, to look at the differences uh, in, in, in colors and the, and the height of the bars. So for instance, for the VD case, the, the blue uh, bars, you see that there's no difference if you pitch directly, uh, if you pitch in water or if you pitch in a 15 plate word. So th these uh, differences are not significant. Uh, higher alcohols. Same, there's no difference. Uh, acetaldehyde, there's no difference. And then the esters, also no difference. So it means that uh, there's no difference. Uh, it's a bit boring, sorry for that, but this is what we found. Then uh, T58, well, I can go a little bit quicker. As you see, also the kinetics are the same. You see a little bit of a of a drop here, but this is simply just normal biological uh, variation, and and uh, you know the, the errors that you get if you do uh, measurements, uh, nothing to be worried about. Uh, this is uh, all the same. Uh, ethanol the same, apparent degree of uh, fermentation the same, and also you can see quite quickly that also the aromatic profile of of the beer made is is all the same. USO5, uh, as you can see now, uh, also the same. 
So we found no differences if you pitch directly, if you rehydrate in water or if you rehydrate in wort in terms of kinetics, in terms of uh, reached final ABV, in terms of uh, apparent degree of fermentation, and in terms of uh, aromatic uh, composition at the end. So uh, for the ales, there's no difference. Now look at uh, the impact of aging. Uh, so as I mentioned, we do a forced aging test. This is uh, the results for US05. So blue again, direct pitch, uh, orange, uh, rehydrate in water, gray, rehydrate in 15 plate of word. You see here uh, the kinetics. So uh, uh, the orange one is a little bit behind, but the curve is exactly the same. So uh, uh, this is also considered as a, a normal biological variation. Um, if you look at the, 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 the yeast that has been aged for three years, you see that the curves are also exactly the same. Both In both situations, fermentation is completed in five days. So these curves are actually completely similar. Then the lagers. Uh, I'm showing now W3470. Um, this is the, the lager yeast that is uh, used the most um, uh, globally. So if you look at the kinetics, again here on the top left, time versus ethanol concentrations for the three different conditions, uh, you see uh, it's exactly the same. Final reached ABV, as you can see, no differences, exactly the same. Apparent degree of fermentation, exactly the same. And then the aroma profile, a little bit as expected, exactly the same. So no differences here. For S23, same, same situation. So uh, there's no difference between direct pitch rehydrating in water and rehydrating in 15 plate of wort in terms of kinetics, uh, produced alcohol, apparent degree of fermentation, and the aroma profile. Then uh, for the lagers also forced aging. So if you compare uh, a fresh pack uh, versus uh, a pack that has been aged for three years, you see here again uh, a very similar results. Uh, at eight days of fermentation, the fermentation is complete. Uh, you see again a little bit of differences, but these differences are so small that again it's it's simply a normal uh, a biological uh, uh, variance that that you always uh, that you always have. So conclusions on yeast cell vitality: we found no significant difference between the direct pitch rehydration in water and rehydration in in 15 plate of wort. The kinetics were the same. The forged age kinetics were the same. And the production of volatiles and final ABV was the same. Uh, and also uh, the apparent attenuation obviously was, was the same. We call this, so this is a marketing slide, guys, sorry for that. Uh, we branded uh, the, the yeast uh, with this brand. It's called easy to use. And whenever you see this label on a, on a package of yeast, it means it has undergone this complete study to ensure that uh, uh, you can choose to direct pitch or rehydrate if you prefer that. Uh, uh, we know then if it's easy to use that it works and the situation uh, and the results will be the same uh, uh, if you direct pitch or if you hydrate uh, the, the, words, uh, the, the yeast. So with that, I reached the end of, uh, of this talk. Uh, again, I like to highlight the Fermentus app where a lot of uh, information is available. If you didn't download it yet, please do. Um, especially in the webinar of the last week, I will see uh, the added, uh, I will show you a little bit more the added value of, uh, of the app compared to uh, information we have available. So the webinar uh, of next week is uh, the impact of fermentation conditions on the flavor profile of beer. I will uh, specifically focus on temperature, pitching rate, and original gravity for both an ale and a lager yeast and show you what happens if you change the conditions and what happens to the flavor profile of your beer. Uh, last but not least, uh, I don't know if you already did this, but uh, a lot, so, so last week, but if you have the time, uh, I would really appreciate it if you complete uh, the questionnaire. Uh, you can leave your comments, you can leave suggestions, uh, you can put in ideas if you like. Um, 
because this will help me to prepare for for future webinars so if you have specific topics that are not on the lineup uh, at present but you want to uh, to to see later on uh please use this uh, use this uh, forum um the reason I, I i'm not asking you to send me any emails is because i'm doing these webinars uh, throughout europe and uh, so i get uh, i get comments from from different countries so it's it's easy if you for me at least uh, uh, if you if you use this form so guys questions no questions well, as, as far as I see, Gino, uh, all the questions have been answered from the chat as well. Okay. Well, then I hope to see you uh, not next week, but the week after, actually, uh, on Friday the 30th, um, to discuss this. I really, really uh, uh, stress that this is a, a very important webinar because you will learn quite a lot from this. Uh, most of you brewers don't have the uh, the flexibility of, of changing a lot of things because, you know, there's only limited time to brew. So we did this for you and, and you will learn quite a lot. Uh, so please, please join us uh, in two weeks. For now, I wish everybody a great weekend. Uh, enjoy some beers, you know, in this crisis time, we have to take care of, of, of each other. So unfortunately, you cannot drink with friends, at least not in Holland, where I'm, I'm now. Um, uh, but you can enjoy it, you know, on your own. Uh, so thanks again for for joining. And uh, thank, thank you, Gino. Thank you. And see you in two weeks. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, uh, Peter asks a question, <laughs> uh, which is a relevant one. Uh, can the pre presentation be found somewhere? Actually, if all goes well, you should receive uh, tomorrow an automatic email from this system with uh, a, a link to this webinar. So you can re uh, uh, watch it again if you like. Um, it didn't work apparently last week. So this automatic uh, uh, email. So I already contacted, uh, you know, the guys that made this platform, EduDip. Uh, I didn't get a reply yet, um, but it will. All the presentations, you know, during the the, the cycle of the webinars will be uh, will be available. They will be taken offline somewhere in January 2021, uh, and the reason is that we will restart or, and and do new uh, new webinars and. Uh, uh, we don't uh, want to have, you know, uh, recordings circulating too long because, uh, as you can see, uh, and as you will discover in, in the course of the webinars, we are constantly doing research. Uh, so this means that we are also constantly adapting uh, our presentations. If you have new information, we put that in and we, we prefer to only, uh, uh, you know, share the latest information. So sometimes uh, you find, uh, for instance, specification sheets that have uh, that are old, five years old. Um, you as a brewer, if you don't realize this, uh, this information could be outdated. So that's why we prefer uh, uh, not, you know, to to have old presentations circulating. But during the course of this webinar, all will be available. So, you know, with the, between now and and, uh, and January 2021, uh, I hope you find time to at least uh, watch them uh, or, or watch them back uh, if, if you want that. Okay, guys, thanks a lot and see you in two weeks. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.